Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. It's 1.45am in the morning or in the morn if we go back 500 years and I've got no idea what the day is today I think it's Thursday the 7th of um, March 2019 uh, please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and if you're watching on YouTube please only watch what's well, the same same f warning or not warning but advice it's not really a warning only it's not you know your head's not going to fall off if you if you close your eyes but it's it's about safety, you know. If you're cutting, mowing the lawn, cutting the lawn, and you're using one of those, those big ones, you know, where you can sit in and you can, I've never had been in one myself, but I imagine it's fun. You can have a sandwich, a cup of coffee, probably while you're doing it. And, you know, you, the kind of thing that you could mow a, uh, like a tennis lawn or uh, a probably you know I don't know cricket lawn or a football pitch or like a golf course you know because you're not going to do that with scissors are you and you're probably not going to do it with a fly mo you're going to need something a bit more bigger um, so yeah don't listen to this when you're doing something like that because if you did close your eyes you might end up um, just cutting off something you don't want to cut off you know trimming 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 too much leaving a bare patch you know you might end up If you're doing a golf course, you don't. You might end up doing some kind of Brazilian strip, or I don't know. Mind you, that is kind of what uh, that bit between the cricket bits is, isn't it? It's just like one strip down the middle where they throw the ball at each other and hit it with the with the uh, stick thing. Yeah, and if you are watching on YouTube, please, please, please subscribe. And thank you to those of you that have been subscribing. And I've been getting a lot of comments. Well, not a lot, but more. An increasing amount of comments on YouTube, which has been lovely. So thank you very much. I do appreciate all your support, whether you're listening on Spotify or iHeartRadio or TuneIn or, you know, whatever podcast you're listening on, or maybe if you're on my website listening to this, or if you're watching on YouTube or via Facebook or Twitter, you know, wherever you are, thank you. I do appreciate your support. And if you want to contribute to my cause and support me, you are able to donate if you wish. Um, just go to my website, there's a donation box, just a PayPal thing. And you can make me rich so I can go and buy my speedboat. Yeah. So yesterday, 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 or yeah, it was yesterday. 
I did a live broadcast which lasted I think it was an hour and a half and I did it with a guest uh, Sebastian and it was very much more different from the standard let me bore you to sleep but it was quite weird because I had this realisation when Sebastian was talking if you listen to it you'll hear it it's I don't know what point in the recording it is, put it halfway through or I don't know. I just realised how boring he was being. And he was purposely doing it. I think he was. Either that, otherwise I'm being rude, aren't I? But he just said is that what it's like for people listening to me it's so tedious it's, it's horrible it's like oh no I can't I can't but then I wasn't trying to go to sleep and it was in a different scenario you know it was a different um situation but I've been in those situations and that's what I aim this it's kind of what this structure is is when I first started doing these my aim is to be that person that you're sitting in front of that's talking and talking and talking and you it's not, that, it's not that you can't escape. Because you could. You could just stand up and walk away. Of course you could. But you don't kind of want to do that. And they're still talking. And it's not so much that they're talking. It's just they're talking about something that you've got no interest in. And... If you're not interested in cardboard boxes, then listening to someone talking about cardboard boxes for an hour is, at the very least, boring. Doesn't mean that the person's boring, you know, it does but it does it doesn't mean that they're boring it just means that the subject matter doesn't stimulate you so it's you know it's it's a it's not a disrespectful thing it's what it is but it's it's not and but then I've met people that can make boring stuff sound interesting I went to the pub once years and years ago um, I had this agency job and the bloke it just started and he was older than me so he's probably like his mid 50s I wonder he's doing a big poo that's nice oh no it's a wee wee um, I can't remember let's, let's say his name's Jim for example and we were working together and he was funny he did not care <laughs> about anything you know he was he was 55 or he was getting on he's got to be in his 50s and he was just there to get a bit of money you know to basically to to get by And I enjoyed his company so much, having spent the whole day with him, that I ended up going to the pub with him after work, spending all evening with him as well. And he wasn't saying anything interesting, but it 
was funny. It's very funny. I mean, even it's, I'll give you an example of one of his stories. He said it was in the pub. Uh, it was the what was the pub's name? It was. Um, see, I don't like this because it was a pub that I knew. And it was local to where I lived for 12 years. But for me to forget it means I'm, I'm forgetting my history. Like my history, you know, my life. Um, maybe it's because I make up so much rubbish that I forget what's real and what's not. Uh, it was. Da, 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 da. Not the Crouch Charms. Bricklayer's Arms, no, but that was a pub that I used to know. Bricklayer's Arms was in Shoreditch. You can check that on Google if you want. Bricklayer's Arms, Shoreditch. In fact, Rivington Street, I do believe. EC2. See? Quite specific. Uh like the bow no, Rid, not Riddick bow that's a boxer well, that was a boxer um, crap not crouch damn see this pub was a pub that I went into when I very very first moved to London so I was born in London I was born in North London and then I lived there for the first two years of my life so technically I'm a Londoner in a sense I was there for two years then I moved to various different places uh, uh, Newcastle South End Suffolk different places and then when I was a, an adult or old enough I moved to East London then I moved back again. Then I moved back to London again. A year later. What was the name of that pub? It was like a landmark. You know when you got a landmark? And you know when you ask... Sometimes... Um, you'd be in the middle of nowhere. You're not somewhere you've never been before. And you, you ask someone directions and they say... Oh yeah, it's down by where the old mill used to be. It's old old mill road. Old yeah, it's down near where the old mill used to be. Hasn't been there for five thousand years. But yeah. And yeah, it's just around the corner from the from the um the hospital that uh, hasn't been there either for three hundred years. And there is the uh the farm, the tank farm, but the tank farm's not there either anymore. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically just a crater. There's nothing there. You know, that kind of thing. Um, what was the name of that? Anyway, I know what it is, so that's probably the main thing. It's a pub. I'll give you a description. It's... It's where I used to live. I've lived in different places. Um, but I've described to you in previous recordings Maryland train station. And remember, I talked about in the past the roundabout, but it's not really a roundabout because you could sit on it. You know, it was more just like a, a bit of land. I think there was toilets and you could go cottage in if you fancied. And there was um, a massage place across the road. Yeah, so basically, if you go straight up, that would lead you to Forest Gate. And turn left leads you to Leighton. Well, it's the left. It's the left bit. And that's, if you go down, I think it's Leightonstone Road, or I think. 
And at the end of that, well not the end, but at the next, there might have been one set of traffic lights, or maybe the second set of traffic lights, or was it the third? But you see there's a pub. It's not the only pub. The pub, there was a pub on the right hand side, which was an Irish pub. And that's the pub I was sitting in with my friend that I'm talking about. We were sitting in there. And he was telling me about what happened with his friend at the other pub, which was literally, if you came out of the pub that we were sitting in, turn right, just walk up a little bit, and you could see it's on the corner. And it was, it was all right, you know, it's, Being in East London, it was, um, I think it was kind of a different atmosphere during the day than what it was at night time. It was, you know, there's quite a few young people around during the day, and the, the people that like to drink perhaps a little bit more often than the average person would be there <laughs> during the day as well. But then in the evening, maybe families used to get together, take their kids, take the dog, you know, um, have little parties, sing around a piano, you know, just general East London pub. And uh, eating jelly deals, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and Andre's come to say hello. Hello, mate. It's because I'm talking, isn't it? You don't like it. His hair on the top of his back is all matted. So I'm going to have to give him a brush. Or I'm going to have to give him a bath. And he doesn't like the idea of that, do you? No, you don't. Don't pretend to yawn. No, don't pretend to yawn. Like, oh, look, I'm not going to give you a bath because you're too tired. That's not going to stop me. The only thing that's going to just make me want to give you a bath... Yes, he is. He is due a bath. He hasn't had one for absolutely ages, and he doesn't like he doesn't like baths. It's the thing most in the world that he doesn't like. Hello. He's just behaving himself. He's just laying on my lap, just looking at me with his little eyes. He's got his eyes half closed and I'm stroking the top of his head. But he heard the word bath. So I think he's sucking up. He's just like, just trying to be all gentle and loving. Pretending to be loving, aren't you? Eh? Yeah, I know. I know your game. Yes, I do. I think sometimes he gets tired when he listens to me. When I do these, he just goes to sleep. Are you getting bored as well? Eh? Just stroking the side of his face. So I've got one hand holding his bum. Well, not his bum, but not fingering him. I mean, the, I'm holding the bottom of his like where his tail is and stuff oh he sneezes you got a sneeze sneeze he's been sneezing a bit this afternoon tonight don't know why I went out today and I had to leave him so I had, I had an appointment I needed to go out and do some stuff and I came home and he was as fast asleep And then I took him out and let him take me for a walk. So we were walking for ages. We were out for over an hour, I reckon. And he basically just led me where he wanted to go. And it was raining. And it was a bit windy. He was trying to give me, what are you doing? Why are you so cute? Let me say hello to everybody. It's amazing, I can't believe I've spent 13 years working on this 
you know, free service where making audios and then big videos and stuff. And straight away, as soon as Andre appeared, everyone loved him. Everyone prefers Andre to me. It's not fair. It's not fair. They wouldn't love you as much if they had to clear up all your poo, would they? Eh? Might not love you as much if you but you bit their ankles and toes when they're trying to put their socks on. He's not even looking at me. He's looking away. He's pretending that he can't hear me. I think he's thinking if he looks away, then he's invisible to me. I can't see him anymore. I can see you, Andre. He's not even looking at me. Completely black. Oh, you are looking at me now, yeah? You can see me now. Oh, the person that feeds you, you can see me. Yeah? You can see your daddy now. You know, I can't believe, how can I be in... All these years, I honestly, I would not have believed it if you'd have told me that one day, I'll be sitting here in a big squeaky black chair in my own flat well it's not my you know council flat but it's still still mine as long as I want it cuddling a ferret whilst making a recording of me being boring Getting over a thousand downloads a day from the various podcasts. Who'd have thought that that would be? In fact, not only have I got, I must have. I'm going to get rid of the SoundCloud podcast. There's no point in having. What's the point in having it? It's cost me ten pounds a month. I had to get rid of my website because I can't afford it anymore. So I do have a website, but it's just a, it's a blogger and it's free, but I've just transferred my, um, the domain name direct it to there. I forget what my point was. <laughs> there was, there was a, there, there wasn't a point was there to start with. But just imagine, I just, just think that I would one day be doing that. That the most important person in my life was a, a ferret. A ferret. <sighs> so yeah, life is unusual. I actually saw my psychiatrist today. It's a really weird, it's a balancing act, this whole thing that I do. Because on one level, I'm kind of like a therapist. Well, I am officially a qualified therapist, but I'm also unemployed. And I've got mental health issues, uh, bipolar, uh, and uh, this there's, there's like with it's like with an additional uh, emotionally unstable personality disorder kind of mixed kind of a mixed thing going on there I take medication and I know that some people if they hear that they'll think Oh, he's one of them. He's one of them. Ah, it's like, you know what? You don't have to even have legs in order to coach someone to run. You know, you, you don't, you could, you don't even have to be able to swim to coach someone to be able to swim. You just need to know how to motivate someone. I suppose the point I'm trying to make is I 
I might not be. I never try to. I never, never try to present myself in a, like. Ooh, aren't I perfect? Kind of way. Never really appealed to me to be. I never wanted to be perfect. When I went to the Buddhist center, I said that, and I got a very funny reaction. Why don't you want to be perfect? Why? Why would I? And I'd be like you lot, <laughs> acting all superior. No, I didn't say that, but I just. I don't want to be perfect. I want to. I like the idea of being. Uh, perhaps a nice version of myself. Maybe the nicest version, but probably not even that. Or maybe that actually probably is quite an aspiration to be the nicest version of yourself. But. It's a fine balance between being real and truthful and not being an arsehole. <laughs> it's kind of, I don't want to be an, an ass to people. I want to be nice. I want to be, I don't know about friendly, but uh, respectful, you know? Well, it's not that I want to be unfriendly, but I don't, I'm not really, I'm not an excitable person. I don't jump up and down. I really jump up and down, not with anger, not with happiness, not with just, I, I'm not, I think my level of excitement is quite low, generally. It rises at times, and then I'll go back down. So I think my, my my normal automatic level of if you want to call it happiness or whatever is probably quite low I'm not an excitable person but it does change of course it does like we all no one stays the same all the time but I don't want to be someone that's getting excited all the time but there's nothing wrong with that I remember Christmas back in what year would this be 1990 2000 no 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 my sister probably was at school or maybe she wasn't at school maybe she was an adult by then Anyway, I was staying at my dad's house, the parents' house, and I was sleeping in a room, and it was it was like a spare room. Yeah, so they must have all left, yeah, they must all be adults because they weren't living at home anymore, unless she was. My sister might have still been living at home, but my brother wasn't. And she didn't have any kids, so it's quite a, quite a long time ago. But I was in the middle room, uh, which was the it used to be my brother's room. Now it's a spare room, basically. And we're going back probably two thousand. Yeah, probably a good 18, 19, 20 years ago ish. It might have been less. It might have been more. I really don't know. But, because my brother's 40, so he, he left home probably at 18. So it could have been over 20 years ago. Anyway, this was Christmas morning. So I visited. I came down. I was living in London. I came down to visit. Stayed there for a couple of days. The thing is, when I visit, there's no trains. But there is trains to get there. I don't walk all the way from London. But there's no, there's no way to escape. 
It's no escape from Christmas. No escape from family. For three three days. So basically I get there New Christmas Eve. There's no trains or buses Christmas Day. There's no trains or buses Boxing Day. So yeah, the, the first day for Christmas is the Tuesday for um, trains and buses. And that depends upon what day Christmas is on. Because if Christmas is on... Um, wait a minute, let's have a look this out. Sometimes the Boxing Day, the day after Boxing Day is also a bank holiday. And I might have made that up. But yeah, I, I'm trapped there for at least two days after getting there Christmas Eve. You know, once the last bus and train goes at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night until the first bus on, not Tuesday, but whatever day it might be, um, means that I can't leave. I can't get out. And it's... I don't know why I'm stressing this bit so much. But anyway, that's not really the point. So I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm asleep. I'm not sitting there. I don't sleep sitting up. I do. I have slept sitting up. Would have had like chest infections and stuff. But I don't get no sleep anyway. There's no point even trying. I think when it comes to things like chest infections, you might as well just sit up, watch telly, and fall asleep when you fall asleep. You know. I could be bothered if it's just one of those things. It's uh, it's a bit weird, isn't it? I'm doing a, a fall asleep recording, just telling you to not bother trying to fall asleep. <laughs> but this is a different situation. Um, relaxing's always good, anyway. It's good to relax, and when you relax, it's there's something about relaxing that just feels nice and that's got to be the one of the most mundane sentences I've ever said it's a little bit like when you go on to dating sites you know and people write down I love laughing I do I love laughing me I do I love laughing well I think most people do, mate. I don't think it's a, a unique characteristic. I like reading. No, it's not really... You know, my hobby's watching television. No, that's not a hobby. It's something that people do. Uh, my hobby is going swimming. No, that's again, it's not a hobby. Unless you're competing... Then that's you know that's a hobby, it's a, a sports activity. But it's just going to the gym, it's fitness. It's what we all need to be doing anyway, in some kind of thing. Not really a hobby, is it? No, it's a hobby. Not really, though, is it? No, I think you find it is. I think you'd be very condescending towards me. I don't think I really am, though, am I? I think this. To be honest, if you look at it, I don't think it was really condescending, was it? <laughs> I've had conversations with people about hobbies, and the one thing I say to people, I try to get this across, and this is people in real life, is about passion or purpose we all need to have a purpose this is it's not optional it's really it's really not optional we need to have it and if if you don't have a purpose you need to find a purpose 
something that you're just passionate, something that you love doing that's just so important, something that keeps you going, something to look forward to, something that you're able to, that pulls you through the difficult times, that you're like, okay, well, at least I'm doing that. I'm, and the purpose, it doesn't have to be something that helps people. I personally think that's possibly the best purpose anyone could have is something that helps others. But at the same time, it's about happiness. So to find something that makes you happy and then it doesn't matter whether it helps anybody else or not, or if, as long as it's not hurting anybody. So if your if your purpose your that makes you happy is I don't know making planes, you know, making model helicopters. If that's something that you love doing, then you are very lucky to have found what you love doing. That's a gift. That's a proper gift. I want to say something you love doing. Something that you love doing. Well, I like watching television. No, you don't. I, I love... I personally, I love playing video games. No, it's not. It's... Maybe playing video games is the same. I don't see it. Um, but maybe it is. Maybe playing video games is a passion and it is something that can be a purpose. And if it's something you look forward to doing, something that you absolutely adore doing, then that's just me being arsy and judgmental because... I don't play video games, I don't see the point in them. But then I don't see the point in marriage. <laughs> no, or giving birth. So, you know, I'm not really at the best uh, yardstick for anything, really. Never got into games, never just... Xbox and... By the way, if you're listening to this in the future which is pretty much everyone that's listening, that's going to be listening in the future. It's the future now. And again, it's the future. But, you know, if you're listening to this in 20, 30 years' time, can't imagine I'll be... I'll be, get, I'll be hitting... Well, in 20 years' time, I'll be... 60... Eight years old. Sixty-eight. Wow. I'll probably look about seventy. No, no, sixty-eight. I'll look about fifty. Fifty-five. I think I'm doing all right, you know, with how I look. Generally. There's a few bits that could be changed and that. I think if I ever come into some money... Um, I'll clear the money off and then I'll go and pay f to make myself look a bit better. A uh, good haircut would probably go a long way really with me. And get the a little bit of cosmetic surgery probably. Just a few little bits here and there. Um, I'll probably... Yeah, I'll probably get my, my penis shortened. Because it just doesn't seem fair for me to have had such a, a major advantage over all the other men in the world for so long. Maybe even it out a little bit, have it shortened a bit. So it's, it's like being kind, isn't it, really? Just being kind to others. Uh, what else? It's video games. Oh, yeah, those listening in the future. 
maybe 30, 40, 50. Isn't it weird? There might be someone listening to this from, you might be like a thousand years ahead. You might be, you know, this might be a, a thousand years and I might have been dead for a couple of hundred years by now. And or I might still be alive, who knows? Who knows, you know, they can got, they can got, it's not a proper sentence, is it? They, um, if you are listening to this, I was the king of the world. I was actually in charge of everything, just so you know. And, uh, It's probably best that you start a religion based around me. Yes. And I've got some rules. The first rule of this religion is no religions allowed. <laughs> Including this one. So, if you are listening in the future... video games, Xbox what they turned out to be which people didn't realise is it was actually training they were training the younger generation to control drones for the future so that people could actually work from home and uh, control drones and other mechanical flying machines. <laughs> mechanical flying machines. It's very technical. And what they didn't realize is that uh, when people were actually playing these games, they didn't realize that it was actually really happening in other parts of the world. They were actually controlling drones, but the people playing it didn't know at the time. But they were actually controlling real life drones in other parts of the world. That doesn't come out until like 30, 40 years' time. It's, uh, it's one of those conspiracies in it. So. Video games used to be popular. I don't think of video games as being popular, but I suppose they are. It's one of those things. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Like video games, I don't think of people playing them because I never see it. I forget that it happens. And another thing like this is I moved into this place in 2012, I think it was. Was it 2011? It might have been, yeah, 2011. I think it was about February time. £125 a week for a room. Seriously, it was like double the amount I'd ever spent on a room a week. It was awful. The room was nice. It, you know, had moving wallpaper and, you know, toilet that cleaned itself. You know, it was a good prop, no, I didn't. But it, it was, an, you know, it was, it was all right. But anyway, I won't go into that room. I was living right at the top. So you come in the door. Oh yeah, well, you, you come in the door. You turn left, go into the kitchen, tow, go f straight ahead. There's like a living room bit and a little garden. No one really went into the living room, but generally. And you go up one set of stairs. And to go up another set of stairs. I think I was on that floor. I think. Or maybe there was another set of stairs. I, f I forget. But I was at the top. And there was... 
No, there might be only two sets of stairs, I think, because there was three rooms, there were six rooms in the house that were being lived in. One at the top, three at the top, and three on the, the middle. And there was a reason I was telling you that. So I had this room. I said about things that I forget because I don't see it and I forget stuff happens. Well, I was sitting there in the room, didn't have a television. Not really relevant to the story, but I didn't have a television. And I didn't get to see Big Brother that year. And our Big Brother's finished now. It's not on anymore on, on British television. And I watched Big Brother right away from the beginning. You know, back in 2000 or 1999, whenever it was, it started. But I missed two years of it. Due to just my situation and just uh, not really being interested in anything. But I, I was sitting there and there was this rattling... It was just rat. It sounded like uh, I don't know. Do you know when you've got a rail, like a or like a fence, like a loose fence in a gale, and it rattles, and you've got the concrete posts where the fence bits slid in, but for some reason the there's a gap, and the, the fence is just you know, rattling. It was that kind of thing. And I'm not sure if it was windy or not that day. So I don't, of course, I, I want to make sure I tell you the truth about everything that happens because, you know, I'm a very truthful person. Uh, really. And... I just heard this sound but I didn't know where it was coming from and it was just rattling it's like this is weird went into the kit I'm not kit I didn't have a kitchen there was a kitchen it was all the way downstairs um, but I did have an ensuite bathroom with a sink so if you go in there so basically you go into the, the, the door of the bedroom and the bed was on the right hand side it was a double bed it was quite a big room and then left hand side there was the the doorway to the bathroom it wasn't a big bathroom it had a shower a toilet and a sink and if I was in that situation again I wouldn't get into that situation again because it was way too expensive. It was just a, it was a con job, basically. It was really just ridiculous. Um, but what I should have done, or should have, would have, you know, but I should have got myself my own fridge. And what I could have done is got a microwave and a steamer. You know, the things that you can steam vegetables and you can make meals and a microwave and I could have had everything that I needed just there I wouldn't have had to have gone out well, not ever obviously because I needed to work but I would have uh, had everything in one place um, but I didn't do that so I guess it doesn't really matter although the bloke that used to come and do the maintenance in the house he actually offered me a fridge and I remember him saying to me, Jason, I said, yeah. Let's call him Pat. I don't know what his name was, I forget. He said, would you like a fridge? And uh, I said, I don't know. I'm not sure, really. And he said, well, I've got a fridge, if you want it. I said, yeah, but I'm not sure if... 
I'm not really sure if I want one because my concern was the humming of the fridge and whether it would just get on my nerves a bit, you know. And he said that I don't really care about all that. I just want to know if you want it. I said, well, it doesn't have to be rude. I'm just telling you the reason why I'm not sure if I want it. I mean, I ain't got to get the ump with me. It's not like I'm trying to hold your hand. And he said, yeah, I know. You don't know what I told you before. Uh, not to hold my hand, and you don't. And we agreed, and therefore it's fine. But do you want the fridge? I said, well, oh. I don't know. I'll have a look at it. So he went... I said, where is it? He said, it's in the garage. I said, which garage? He said, you don't need to know which garage it's in. I said, yeah, I, well, how am I gonna, supposed to know where it is? He said, well, I'm about to take you there. I said, what, what, what was, why be so cryptic? Are you gonna blindfold me, make sure that I don't know the, the way to get there? What are you hiding? He said, no, I'm not hiding anything. I'm just saying that there's no point in me giving, explaining which garage door it is when none of them are numbered. And they're just storage. They're used for storage. And I'm the only one that knows where the fridge is. I said, well, why have you hidden it? He said, I haven't hidden it. I just put it into the the one place where there was room because all the other garages are full of all kinds of stuff that people leave behind when they move out. I said, oh. He said, well, what's that? Uh, something's piqued your interest. I said, no, I was wondering like, what kind of stuff people leave behind. He says, well, I'll... Sh I'll show you. I said, what, show me what? I'll show you what people leave behind. Why, 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 why are you going to show me that? He said, because it's a fridge. That's what someone left behind, a fridge. I said, do you want to look at it or not? i got things to do. And I said, okay. So I went down. I looked at it and I was a little bit lazy if I'm honest because it was a bit smelly it needed cleaning uh, I couldn't be bothered I couldn't be bothered so I said no, no thanks he didn't seem upset I mean I think he was going to just throw it out so I'd have been doing him a favour by taking it off his hands so that he didn't uh, need to go to the skip or, you know, the dump or wherever it is and, you know, get rid of it there. So I'm in my room and there's this rattling, like a fence. And I'm thinking, oh, is it the guttering? Because it was. Andre's being naughty now. Well, anyway, I went to the bathroom, nothing there. I was just listening. I couldn't, and it was coming from outside my room. So I'm listening. And I hear it. And it's coming from another room which was opposite where I was and then it hit me they were having sex and this might seem a bit like or oh, so unusual about that I actually forgot that people had sex I completely forgot about it It had been so long that I forgot that that stuff occurred.
Now that's a little bit sad, I think, from my perspective about me. But I couldn't believe it's like, oh my God, I started laughing. Well, I was kind of laughing and crying a bit, a little bit of both. You know, it's like good for them, but I felt sorry for myself. I can't believe it. I forgot that people actually do that stuff. Some people have pleasure. <laughs> I forgot. Completely forgot. So I was in this pub, and my friend, he said, that he was like a new friend, and he told this story, and it was, it's, I won't go into details, but basically, the something house, the pub was called, Thatched House, the Thatched House, that's it. I don't even know if it's still there. It's probably a coffee shop now. Um, but or a kebab shop but it'd been there for a long time it's a proper old fashioned pub and uh, put it this way god that was a, like a mouthful of drink you're not going to get chips with uh the crusts on not the crusts the peel potato peel left on that won't happen there well it didn't I don't think they served food I'm not sure they might have done I think I saw New Year's Eve in there once anyway I remember I played pool once oh yeah after work or it might have been in the afternoon and It might sound weird, but I'm absolutely useless at pool. I'm not very good at snooker. But I'm brilliant at snooker when I'm playing pool. And I can make a pool game last incredibly long period of time. And I did this with there was a group of uh, lads there I say lads probably my age maybe older at the time and I could feel the frustration level rising (laughs) in the anger as I was playing because basically people put 50 pence on the table and they were waiting to play next they played the winner I never really liked that idea I just if you go into a pub you just want to play your friends you don't want to play why would you want to play a complete stranger but uh, I made this game last forever it went on for about 20 minutes and one of my friends said to me I think you should just like wrap this up so I I went to try and hit a ball in and then the game was over because they they won but it's very good at snookering during pool. So I was in this pub, in the pub with my friend, and he said he was in there when this bloke walked in to the thatched house, and the bloke was he was just really drunk, falling all over the place, and the landlord asked him to leave he said you're too drunk not going to serve you and the bloke was rude to the landlord and left apparently about half hour later the bloke came back in and he he threw uh I think he picked up the bar stool and chucked it at the landlord. So the landlord physically removed him from the pub. He came back about half hour later and he 
had like a big stick and he and he's waving it around and he's he hit the pool table and and the landlady the land the landlord physically removed him again and during that one he said I'm going to come back and I'm going to shoot you I'm going to do this I'm going to do that I'm going to burn you down I think the next time he came in he was holding a petrol can and the landlord just kicked him out straight away and said if I'm going to call the police and he kept coming back and each time he came back he was even more threatening and he kept being kicked out he did this about seven times apparently my friend would just say drinking enjoying it enjoying the fun and the landlord was just having none of it you know, there was nothing happened it was just the bloke just kept being threatening and he kept just physically removing him and it got more escalated and his threats were worse and worse each time and then on the, about the ninth time he came in the bloke sat down next to my friend and he looked at the landlord and he said sorry about that <laughs> and that was it so, sorry about that I find that a funny story just the idea that someone would go through all that and then think that they could just walk in and say oh sorry about that one of them days isn't it admittedly my friend probably told the story a lot better than I did because it was very funny when he said it but also I was drunk and he was drunk and and that was it really I have to get some dry food Andre's eating it all but go and put some out for him so thank you very much for listening if you're still awake well done and uh, you win nothing and uh, I will be back again very soon uh, I did a deep sleep whisper hypnosis session earlier yesterday so that's available to listen to and um, I did a let me boy to sleep yesterday as well so I might do another one tomorrow so thank you for listening again if you're on YouTube thank you for watching take care of yourselves Bye.